mining adventurers from Massachusetts. As you guys know, we are on a mission to do a road trip through all 50 states, and we are currently in the New England area. If you guys are familiar with this area, you know that the states here are very teeny tiny. So we figured we're gonna do something kind of fun and do four states in four days. But don't worry, we want to get the full taste of the New England states. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna eat them and go see some cool stuff. The intro was off to such a good start. It was really good. And then it started snowing and I got excited and I lost my train of thought, I'm sorry. Also Christmas and New Year's is literally right around the corner. And we're trying to make it back to the Midwest in our whole rig in time. So we're on a little bit of a time crunch. But anyways, four states, four days, two adventurers. <laughs> do the math, it's gonna be great. All coming up on The Endless Adventure. Yo, we just passed through the town of Sandwich. That's right, there's a Sandwich, Massachusetts. <laughs> Is that where sandwiches are from? I don't know. But we are not going to Sandwich. We are going to the very, very tippy top of Cape Cod to the town of Provincetown. We officially made it to Provincetown and it is so adorable and charming, but the roads are really tiny and our truck is maybe a little too big for it. <laughs> <laughs> We're making it work though. Whoa. It's surprisingly bustling considering it's dead of winter. I know, I'm, I feel like this is the first town where things have actually been open this yeah. season. So we were just strolling around the little downtown Provincetown area. It's funny, if you zoom out of Massachusetts, this town actually sits right at the tip of Cape Cod. And I swear that little area, I always thought it looked like a little elves foot or something. <laughs> it definitely does. <laughs> yeah, and right at the tip, we're right where the little bell would be on the boot. <laughs> This awesome spot is called the Provincetown Causeway. <laughs> it is so freaking cool. Oh, and by cool, he means cold. It's really oh, yeah. cold. Yeah, it's brutal cold out here, you guys, but it's <laughs> such a cool spot. <laughs> but this causeway juts out from Pilgrim's First Landing Park, which is where the Pilgrims first landed November 11th, 1960. Right there. 1960. Or 16. <laughs> 1620. 1960. <laughs> Where'd you get 1960? I don't know. It's a little I longer ago than that. But this causeway is super cool. It's just basically like a rocky land bridge that connects the two different land masses. And when the tide comes up, it just completely washes over this and then makes all these pools on the opposite side with sand dunes as far as you can see, bits of grass like poking out. It says once high tide starts, you have about 90 minutes before this whole thing is covered. So at any minute, we're gonna look back and have water at our feet, probably. <laughs> If you look way off in the distance, there's this Race Point Lighthouse. And that is one spot we wanted to go to, but to get out to that, there's this beach road that you can take. It's like two miles out and two miles in. So we didn't really feel like walking it because it's so cold. Seeing it from afar, we'll just have to dune. Instead of do, you get it? Dune. I, I get it. It ain't making me <laughs> laugh, but I get it. Ah, my brain is frozen. I don't know, you guys. We're gonna head into town and try to warm up. Y'all, we found a Christmas market and they have mulled wine and we are stopping everything and getting some. It's basically like being in England, right? I know, I love it! And it's snowing slash raining a little bit. It's so wintry! So this is the Christmas market at the Canteen, which is a seafood restaurant right up in front, but this is unlike any other Christmas market we have ever been to. Okay. It's literally in the sand. I feel like I'm in that Taylor Swift song. Snow, Snow on, on the, the beach. beach. <laughs> it is kind of weird, but it is beautiful. Plus they have delicious food, just like you'd expect to find at a Christmas market. Mm-hmm. I got pierogies. These come highly recommended. Let's cut into this bad boy. Oh yeah. I don't actually know what's inside of these. Is it cheese potatoes maybe? I don't know. All right, I'm taking an Eric-sized bite. <laughs> 
I think at this point we'd be good at this part of these videos, but. Basically, you just taste the creaminess of the dough. There's a lot of sour cream on mine and those caramelized onions. I mean, they're just so flavorful and delicious and it's perfect to warm me up, right? My mold wine, my oh, pierogies. Yeah. Mold wine. Oh my gosh, oh my I God. love it. Winter time. Y'all, it wouldn't be a Christmas market without delicious raclette. You guys know we get raclette at pretty much every Christmas market that we go to. It is basically this very, very stinky cheese. Smells like feet, as Allison would say. But they scrape it off this block with this funny little contraption, and then they smother it all over, usually just a piece of bread, but they gave us a full-on sandwich here. So you got pickles in there, some meat, and then just delightfully toasted with cheese on the bread. Oh my God. <laughs> I love raclette. It's slightly pungent, but just so much cheesy flavor in it. And of course you have the pickles, which give it this burst of saltiness. It is maybe the crunchiest grilled cheese sandwich that I've ever eaten in my life. <laughs> this is the way to make them right here. We're just exploring the market and one thing we definitely want to get is a wreath to put on the front of our pickup truck. So conveniently at the very end of the market, there's a gal who makes her own wreaths. They're beautiful. I think we're gonna get one. What do you think about this one? I think huh? it's perfect. I love the red in there. Yeah, I think and hopefully that's the one. It doesn't have any or too many things so they won't go flying off when we're driving. There's all this, you know, metal in the back and I could give you extra wire to uh Oh yeah, nice. to to string it in. I think this is going to yeah, be the one. Yeah, that's the one for, one, for sure. Nice. We did it. Our truck is officially festive. <laughs> it's so cute. Oh my gosh. Hopefully it stays on. We put a lot of wire yeah. on there. Yay, we did it. I feel really cool. I've never done this to a car, like decked it out, and I always wanted to. Maybe next we need to get some antlers, you think? All right, but it's time to hit the road and see more. So let's let's do that. Woohoo! Okay. Ooh. You guys, it snowed overnight and it's stuck. This is the first time we've woken up to snow in this thing. It's so cool. Dude, not a bad way to start your morning. Check that out. I know, it's cool. all over the trees. Oh, it's a little winter wonderland out there. Sadly, we can't gawk at it too long. We gotta get all packed up and get back on the road because Rhode Island is calling our name. Got a little friend out here for you. Hi. Oh my god! <laughs> Who are you? Oh my god! <laughs> what a little sweet. Oh my god! Aww. Are you the nicest pup? Go get her! Go get her! Go get her! <laughs> Hi! All right, we got a new puppy. This is our dog now. Yes, please. Hi, hello! Oh my god! You are crazy! Gosh! Oh my god! the time has come once more the dreaded fill up <laughs> and with inflation up fuel prices are up so we've been trying to save money anywhere possible so we've been using this handy app called upside which gives us cash back on gas groceries and restaurants and we just wanted to give them a quick shout out for sponsoring today's video Check this out, they literally give you free money when you pump. We just claim an offer for whatever we're buying. In this case, we're fueling up. And then once we're done, we upload a picture of the receipt and then the money gets put directly into our account. And we just found a place that gives us a whopping 21 cents off per gallon. Holy moly, that might be the most we found. Yeah, it's pretty good. So you can cash the money out directly to your bank account, to PayPal, to Amazon, you can get a gift card, whatever. In our case, y'all know we're pretty addicted to coffee. So it's been nice to kind of use the money to offset that. So it's like we're getting free coffee all the time. You can go ahead and give upside to try just download the free upside app in the app store or google play and use our promo code endless to get 25 cents or more back for every gallon on your first tank of gas but we officially have 14 dollars in our account so we got a couple free lattes calling our name huh Ooh let's do it 
Does it ever feel like I'm just smacking you guys in the face when I do that? That's what it feels like from my perspective. It is kind of like I'm smacking you. He always hits the camera and I'm not <laughs> expecting it and I almost drop it. Think fast. Guys, we made it to Newport, Rhode Island, and Ooh. we promptly came right down to the coast. <laughs> Man, it is frigid down here though. Yeah, I imagine this is much more enjoyable in the summertime. <laughs> yeah, but it is still incredibly beautiful. This is something we really wanted to do while we're passing through the area. It's this 10 mile ocean drive that follows the coast. There's all these epic rock outcroppings. There's waves just crashing on them all over the place. And the ocean views might be beautiful, but what we're really after are some mansions. So apparently in the late 1800s, wealthy New Yorkers would come down here to escape the heat and get a bit of a summer breeze. And they started building vacation cottages, which eventually just became full on mansions as they were always trying to top one another. And so you've got mansions on one side of the road, you've got these breathtaking water views on the other. But we are just about to get into some of the big houses. You can see some of them right over there on that little peninsula. <laughs> they look big from here. I have a feeling they're gonna look even bigger up close. It is so interesting that this is basically just a wealthy neighborhood, but has slowly become like a tourist attraction. There's even signs saying like, mansions this way, follow this way for the ocean drive. It kind of reminds me of the garden district down in New Orleans. Yeah. I mean, different architecture, but just how beautiful and pristine everything is, and they encourage you to come and view it. There are, however, many, many different styles of architecture represented here. Some look like old Victorian, almost farmhouse-like. Some of them are giant marble structures. So confirmed, we will never be able to afford any house like the ones you just saw, but we can always afford delicious, delicious breakfast, especially at a cheap Greasy Spoon Diner, which is where we're headed to next to try something that Rhode Island is famous for. are Rhode Island Johnny Cakes, baby. They might look a bit like pancakes, but these are actually made with cornmeal, and this is like one of the most popular, I guess, breakfasty dishes in Rhode Island. It is highly contested whether you do them a little fat and thick like this, or really thin, almost crepe-like. I guess ours are a little on the fatter end, which I'm not upset about, because I feel like it's uh, more hearty this way. Sadly, we ordered strawberries. We thought they would be fresh, and they're really weird and squishy, so don't do that. <laughs> not the best strawberries. <laughs> but we did upgrade and got pure maple syrup on the side instead of the store-bought crap. But you know what that means. Cue the food porn, baby. You can actually find versions of the Johnny Cakes all over the U.S. and the world, actually. You might know them as Hoe Cakes or Journey Cakes. I'm sure there's a billion other names. I'm wondering if it's just gonna taste like grilled cornbread? So we got some butter and then loads of maple syrup on there. It's like a slightly more grainy cornbread pancake. They are definitely not sweet at all. It's just the syrup giving it the sweetness and it's really nice and fried and crunchy. One really cool thing you can do, and I think most Rhode Islanders would do, is go to a grist mill and actually buy the cornmeal and make their own at home. And luckily you're gonna find it on the menu at pretty much any diner in the area. Yep. You're also gonna find the classic breakfast, <laughs> which is what I stuck with. This is perfect. It's all American with a side of Rhode Island. So close. <laughs> We have officially made it to Connecticut. You guys, we're here. We're in New Haven. New Haven, yeah, specifically. This town is known for being the home to Yale, obviously. It's also home to so many historic buildings. As you drive around, you just see them all lining the streets. Most of them, I think, have been commandeered for use by the university. And uh, before we do anything else, we are on a mission to try something that New Haven is known for. It is pizza, but not just any pizza, it it's is a pizza. A pizza. You gotta say it with an Italian accent, <laughs> a obviously. A pizza. One thing that kind of sucks about this place is the portions are just way too small. You know, there's no way this is gonna be enough to fill us up. 
This is, uh, I can definitely say, the biggest pizza that we've ever ordered in our lives. <laughs> I tried. I was like, should we get the small or medium? And Eric said, we're getting the large. Go large and go home, baby. We came to Sally's to try a New Haven style pizza known locally as a pizza. This is a Neapolitan pizza, which basically means I think this is just kind of like a pizza you would find in Naples. But I do think it's slightly different. The first thing you notice is the oblong shape of the pizza. It's also very thin and they cook it with a coal fire. And the idea is to get it pretty burnt. So when you look on the edges and on the underside of it, you're going to see all these delicious little char marks that I'm guessing are going to add a ton of flavor to it. Oh yeah, that's my piece right there, baby. And they're blaring Christmas music in here. I don't hate it, but sorry if you hate it. Oh yeah. That's good a pizza. I love it being really thin because it's almost like there's more flavor because there's less dough. The tomato sauce is just so full of flavor, deliciously salty. And I guess these pizzas typically have a slight bit of crunch to them, but more of kind of a chewy texture, you know? But it is very, very delicious. And I think a lot of times they'll do this just with pizza sauce. And then basically anything you add on top of that is considered a topping. So even cheese is a topping. So we got the tomato sauce, we got the mozzarella cheese on there, and then we added a little basil to ours because Allison insists on having at least a little bit of green on her pizza. Well, I don't know, for some reason, I. I feel like it's a sin to just get cheese pizza. You gotta have something else. Dude, the basil flavor comes through though. It's really good. You guys, they let me come back in the kitchen and watch how the whole operation is done. These guys know what they're doing for sure. <laughs> Man, that fire is hot over here. Yeah, this angle right here. Yeah. So this is where the magic happens, right in there. You can see the coals over there. Oh man, there's literally like fire on the roof in there. And then the sweet, delicious pizza over there. a little bit to the town of Mystic. Y'all, this place is super old. It was founded in like the 1640s, but we came to the Mystic Seaport Museum, which is this incredible outdoor museum gallery. It's actually a 19th century fishing village that they've recreated right here on the water. They have tons of boats and ships, a bunch of old houses and museums and all kinds of things that it would have been like I guess in the 1800s. We're also the only ones here. It's super cool. It's like our own private fishing village. <laughs> yeah well there is quite the winter storm on its way and it's about an hour until closing so I guess it makes sense that we're the only ones but I don't hate it. You guys they have a little boat making shop in here. This is something I would love to try one day. Building a boat? You yeah. couldn't even sail a boat. Are yeah. you gonna build it first? <laughs> I don't even like boats that much to be honest, but <laughs> the building sounds really fun. <laughs> Just basically building anything we wanna do, anything and everything. This is where they make the ropes or the cords as they would call them. They have all these crazy spools over there, each with individual threads that kind of funnel into this manifold that twists them all into one single cord. Then they have this giant warehouse that houses all this machinery because the ropes are so long. Then they twist the bigger ones together to make an even bigger rope. Wow, I had no idea that this is how they used to do it. This is insane quite an operation and uh it doesn't look up to modern state safety standards i have a feeling people lost a lot of limbs back in the day working with this machinery well y'all it has gotten nasty nasty outside I guess all that horrible winter weather that's been in the middle of the U.S. is kind of sweeping over to the east, but we're below all the fun snow stuff. It's just nasty. <laughs> it's just very cold and very wet and yeah. awful. So we started our journey uh, around the New Haven, Connecticut area. and We've just been heading west and just passed over Manhattan just through the north and we just entered New Jersey. But we've really enjoyed just traveling through all these little New England states, trying all their quirky little dishes. Uh, and we decided to try one more dish, right? We got something else, right? Oh yeah, and this one's really juicy and plump <laughs> and, and fried. All right. These are deep fried hot dogs, also known as rippers. So we got one done the normal way and then we got one 
I guess they call it a weller, because it's more well done. The key with this is that you fry it until it rips its seam, thus a ripper. But we came to this amazing little place called Rut's Hut. It's been open since the 1920s, I think 1928, and it has been serving up these since then. So people say that these are the best hot dogs they've ever had in the entire world. It's like a pork and beef mix. All right, all mustard up. It's just a slightly more juicy hot dog, I'd say. <laughs> like the casing is a little tighter, so it really pops when you bite it. I actually really like the well done hot dog. It's got this crispy outer, it almost feels like it's breaded because it's so flaky on the outside. But then, you know, somehow still nice and juicy on the inside. It doesn't look the most appetizing as you guys saw because it's just kind of a shriveled up wiener. <laughs> Well, y'all, these dogs are growing on us. We got two more. <laughs> the well done ones are actually pretty good. The well done, get the wellers. But we're gonna finish these and then we still got a couple more hours to get to our campsite, so we need to get back on the road. Oh God, just what we need, a little wiener fuel for the red. <laughs> That's your big joke? My big joke. You guys, that might be the highest toll we've ever paid in our lives. It's literal highway robbery. $50 to drive on that turnpike? Wow. Obviously it's because we have a trailer, but still. Yikes. Oh, and now I got to try to merge into this. Why does it, my $50 better be going towards fixing this in the future? <laughs> Dang it. Well, we just marked off four states at one time, y'all, and it was the least satisfying yet. <laughs> These states are so friggin' small. They like, Holy cow. I thought these states up here were small, but all of these comprise like yeah. one. Well, considering one of the four states is the smallest state in the country, you know, it kind of makes sense. But yeah, there you go. Basically the whole entire Northeast is done. Well, this has been a super charming and delicious road trip. It was really fun just popping into all these towns that we've never been to and seeing what each state has to offer. A lot of them were new to us. So our plan is obviously to hit all 50 states, but uh, you know, if we spend too much time in every state, we're gonna basically be doing this for the rest of our lives. So inevitably there's some states that we're gonna have to spend a little bit less time in. And also, you know, we're trying to get over back here for Christmas, uh, but then there are plenty of other states, states we haven't really spent a lot of time in, lots of really fun stuff waiting for us. States that don't have a lot of snow headed for them <laughs> this week, yeah. so. Bye Northeast, you've been a lot of fun, but uh, we're getting the heck out of here. Goodbye adventures. We'll see you on the road.